TIG welding is the only way to go. No way, man, it's all about MIG these days. TIG is what the real fabricators use. MIG will have you up and running in five minutes. TIG, MIG, TIG, MIG, TIG, MIG. Whoa. Hey, uh, welcome to the shop. Today we're talking about using the right tool for the job. For a serious hobbyist, or especially an automotive enthusiast wanting to fabricate your own parts, TIG and MIG welding are gonna be the options to choose from, so we'll break them down a little bit. Bear in mind that for a lot of projects, you could really use either process. I have this budget go-kart build behind me I'm doing for the channel. You'll see that video come out in the next couple weeks. And for that frame, I used MIG welding across the board just because it's a lot faster, though I could have just as easily used TIG. So it's not like there's one right process for any given project, but there are times when one is better than another. Let's talk about how each of the processes work. So TIG stands for tungsten inert gas, or a more proper name around here is gas tungsten arc welding. And the key here is that tungsten electrode. And the tungsten electrode is really special because it doesn't melt. Electricity flows between that tungsten electrode and whatever you're welding over a gap. And that creates an electrical arc which is really hot to melt your metal. That's what allows you to join things together. Now while all this stuff is smoking hot, you need to keep it protected from the atmosphere because it'll react with some of the elements in the air. When that happens, it gets contaminated. So a gas flows out around that tungsten electrode protecting everything. You also need to add some additional metal a lot of times, most of the time really, and that's done with filler metal, often manually just with your other hand. So it's a pretty manual process and it has a bit of a learning curve. Now MIG welding on the other hand is a semi-automatic process. It stands for metal inert gas and the metal is the electrode. So your filler wire that adds material to it and your electrode are the same thing made out of a similar material to whatever you're welding. It's also shielded with a gas to be protected from the atmosphere and the air. And because that metal electrode melts off as you go, it's fed out with an electric motor and a feeding mechanism to maintain that length of arc. So what should you be asking yourself when you're trying to pick between each process? The first thing is what materials am I planning to run? Either process can run a wide variety of materials, but if you do want to weld a variety of things, TIG welding has some real advantages. If you have a TIG welder with AC or alternating current output, that's needed to weld aluminum or things like magnesium, the same machine, the same torch, and the same shielding gas can run just about any material that you'd want to weld. On the other hand, with a MIG welder, different materials typically need a different shielding gas. So I have a shielding gas for steel, I have a different shielding gas for aluminum, I would need a different shielding gas to MIG weld stainless steel, or at least to do it properly. It's also different torches. If you're welding aluminum, you need either a spool gun or a special liner in your gun to help feed that softer aluminum wire. So changing between materials on MIG welding is a much bigger hassle where TIG, you pretty much change your filler wire and you might change your gas shielding cup. Next thing to think about, how long are your welds? If you're running really long lengths, you can go a lot faster with MIG welding and it can save you a ton of time. And time is money. TIG welding takes a bit more time because it is a little bit more of a manual process. That being said, you can move along at a fair rate I mean, in fact, there's a trailer manufacturer just up the road here that runs 40 foot long aluminum TIG welds on their semi trailers all day long. So you can run long welds for sure, but it sure is a lot nicer to run that with a MIG than it is with TIG. The next is how much effort are you really willing to go to to clean your material? If you're welding together a whole bunch of square tubing, say you're building trailers or shelves or things like that, you might not want to do a whole lot more than a quick wipe down or maybe grind off some mill scale, where with TIG welding, you need to have things meticulously clean to have it run well. So MIG can be a better option if you don't want to spend as much time on material preparation. One other way that it becomes a little faster and more efficient. Another consideration is the aesthetics of the weld. You can get a nice looking MIG weld, but you really just can't match the aesthetic you can get with a TIG weld because of the level of control that it has. The next consideration is how much time do you have to learn a process? MIG welding for most people is much faster to learn than TIG welding. 
And so if you don't have as much time to put into practicing and learning, then that's a good way to go. That being said, if you work through in a methodical way, you can learn to TIG weld much faster than most people give credit for. I've built a set of courses. They walk through the learning process in a systematic way to help you learn how to weld faster to give your practice sessions a specific goal and exercise to work on so you don't end up spinning your wheels and wasting time. And I'm confident that the little bit that you'll spend on these courses will come back many fold in the amount of time you save in the learning process. I'll link them in the description, so check those out if you're interested. The last thing to consider between these processes is your positioning. If you're welding on a bench, TIG welding is much easier than if you're trying to work around in awkward shapes, you know, welding a roll cage or underneath a car or things like that. It can be done, definitely is done every day by a lot of people, but MIG welding is a lot easier when you are moving around in awkward positions and awkward spots. So you might wanna think about that. Now just remember, whichever process you choose, it's usually not a right or a wrong answer for most projects, either process will work. Now if you wanna learn more about how either of these processes work and the details of how to actually weld with them, check out these videos listed on the screen now, as well as the link to my online course if you wanna go all in on that. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in today. Until next time, weld safe and we'll see you then.